We're back with the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Now, Chris Kende Wandu is uh, on standby. He joins us via Zoom this morning. He's a United Kingdom arbitrator. Chris, it's good to have you join us. Good morning. Good morning and happy Easter in advance. And uh, a Huawei. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I mean, just quickly, I was thinking about, you know, your designation. And I thought to ask you what you make of uh, what's happening in the United Kingdom, especially when uh, the teachers are, you know, embarking on a strike action come the 27th of April. I mean, there's a lot that's going on in the UK. Yeah, it's the reality of what is on down. It's not just the teachers. Don't forget that uh, some, some weeks back, yeah, it was in the rain. Um, embark on strike, the doctors were on strike, the nurses were also on strike, and uh, everybody's um, asking for more wages uh, uh, this time around uh, because of the economic realities. And um, don't forget that I think part of the problem is that the decision by the uh, UK to leave the EU, that is that great exit, is having a big, huge effect on the United Kingdom, trying to, trying to grapple with the effects of. Uh, recession across the globe and everybody's asking for a higher wage and so don't be surprised it's not only in Nigeria that people ask for higher wages and on strike it is also happening in UK and so many other European countries all right then let's let's start off with the punch now uh the punch is concerned about the handover I had handover that's what the caption it boldly written military vows crack down on security threats one's IPOP orders now Nobody should threaten the integrity of Nigeria or truncate democracy. That's what the Defense Headquarters is quoted to say on that one. Uh, Defense Headquarters and the Army Chief. APC asks Biden to disregard anti tunubu petition as protesters dem demonstrate in the United States. Politicians rooting for interim government irresponsible and mischievous. That's what uh, Buhari's media organization is saying. These are the writers you find underneath the board caption on the punch if you pick up a copy. Now, away from that, federal government approves 173 loan apps, bars, illegal online banks. Okay, that's it. So more boring. Uh, I really don't know if these loan apps are making profits, you know, because <laughs> uh, it, it can be a lot. One killed cause injured as Rivers APC PDP supporters clash. And that's very unfortunate in our democracy. 21st century at that. Divorce among young couples alarming, according to Shaikh, following the Ramadan celebration. Absence of Lagos Bishop accused of raping pastor Stoll's trial. Wow. Again, you find Ohaneze Tunubu Songwolu orders Mon. Oji Kalu's wife, unfortunately, uh, that story broke yesterday. Oji Kalu's wife uh, was reportedly uh, dead. May her soul rest in peace. We'll move away from that and quickly check out the leadership newspaper. Tenth national leadership, opposition parties brace for tough fight with APC. Tenth national assembly leadership, Opposition parties brace for tough fight with APC. We'll go with party that shares our, our, our ideology. That's like a tongue twister there. We'll go with party that shares our ideology. Uh, that's what the NNPP is quoted to say. We're still monitoring development according to the Labour Party. It feels like it's not just going to be business as usual when you're just walking to the assembly and then you have just, you know, the ruling party and maybe one opposition party. Now, 2023 witnessed a lot of forces, you know, in terms of the thought force. Maybe, you know, that's the thought force, uh, you know, the conversation prior to the election was about. And the PDP alliance plot suffers setback as we care Ibori back who? North Central, Southwest Senators will be the decider. These are also riders you find there. APC crisis account for party funds. National Vice Chairman tells Adamu account for party funds. That's it. Uh, it's very important. Then again, reverse PDP protesters are at INEC office. APC candidate escape death. And so it's very unfortunate that we're still talking about all sort of violence, you know. Uh, in our elections, even post-election, then there's still violence. After, before the elections, during the elections, we recorded violence. You ask yourself, what happened to the peace accord? 
you know, the peace pact that was signed. And just before move away then, you find a suspense as police seal Labour Party Secretariat in Imo. Expert foresees Nigeria breaking epileptic power jinx. Uh, okay, let's see how that pans out. That's the much we can take on the leadership. we we'll quickly turn our attention to The Guardian. Afendi Ferry or Hanese Arewa Youth reject interim government plot. But, I mean, is it in the place of... So whether or not people are saying we reject it or we don't reject it, when you have the masterminds of this, go ahead to execute it without, you know, the relevant security agencies intervening, then it becomes... A, a thing. So uh, it's okay to make all of the statement, but we also need to back our statement with actions. I'm sure that these persons who are planning this don't live in, in sky. Uh, they probably live with us on planet F and they're not spirit. And so we can identify them and ensure that they are apprehended. A threat to national security. Ajayi remains suspended, has no right to issue statement for Afeni Feria. That's according to Adebanjo. Ndigbo, not part of any conspiracy plans to attend. Uh, I check that again. Digbo, not part of any conspiracy. Plans to attend Tunubu's swearing in. Decide presidential petition before May 29. Agbakoba tells tribunal. Narrative state peaceful march. Uh, or na native state peaceful march. Vows to resist move to truncate democratic rule. That's what you also find. And, and just before we move away from the Guardian then. Worries over revenue, petrol scarcity as buyers shun Nigeria oil cargoes. That's the much we can take on the Guardian. Now, quickly, we just have this one, and then we have uh, Chris Kane Wandu who would be sharing his thoughts on it. Daily Trust, Nigeria imports 300 billion naira palm oil in six years. Wow. Uh, then you find get supply from Malaysia. Was it not the same Malaysia that came to Nigeria to take our seedlings? You know, what's going on? Uh, India, China, and Cameroon get supply from Malaysia, India, China, and Cameroon. I mean, palm oil that, we're con that we are consuming, we're importing. Uh, that's nothing to, it's, it's, it's not a very exciting headline this morning. A barrel sells for over $600. Work vision needed to revamp the sector. That's what Esparta quoted to say. Trump lands in New York, uh, meets lawyers ahead of his arraignment today. Then again, uh, Nigerian media Owners launch complaints commission says initiative won't gag press. Uh, Jam apologizes as a Yudupo's varsity flood for barring hijab wearing candidates. Nigeria struggling to find buyers for crude. Well, how long can we continue like this? Uh, we'll just let it at that then. Chris Kende, uh, I know that you're itching to share your thoughts, but let me let it open to you now. Uh, which of these headlines, you know, interest you as I was going through the pages of a national dailies? Ordinarily, the issue of um, people trying to truncate um, the, the handover date of 20, uh, May 29, 2020, of course, would be of interest to anybody uh, watching or reading this morning. And um, the, it, the DSS uh, issued that warning first. Now the, the military is also issuing that warning uh, and saying that uh, they will not allow any individual or group of people to truncate the peaceful handing over of government from 29th of May 2023. And that is the right thing to do. And I said it time with that number that anybody that has anything against the Additional result of the election that was held in March and February this year had the opportunity of going to court to seek redress rather than taking to the violence means of truncating this democracy that each and every one of us fought for and we got in 1989. And um, I said it out with that number. If the security agencies or the secret police, as we call them, DSS, have names of those that are trying to truncate this uh, handing over. Why not name them or why don't I? It's not just just coming to uh, issue statements, the press, and uh, that to me is just hitting quality. It's not the system and sending fears down the spines of Nigerians, not that clients. Once you see that, what you do immediately go into investigation and start making thorough investigation. And that, that's what then you get the people arrested and get them charged to court. And nobody's approved the law. 
even in the United States presently, can see the former president of the United States, uh, Donald Trump, today is going to face the court. It's going to the court. It has never happened in the history of uh, the United States. So that is where democracy works. So anybody here, irrespective of how high he is or she is, that goes against um, the, the laws of the land to face the music. That is a one point. Second, uh, to me, most of these agitations would have been uh, lived in the board. If, the, if INEC has also done what it done, I've said it with Anna Boyd, so we don't agree. This is what we had in February and March, uh, just one of the most flawed elections we've ever experienced since 1999. Not in terms of voting, they have voted. But when it came, the problem is the presidential election, where INEC would not uh, follow its own rules to the latter. And that in itself brought a lot of suspicion. If they've done what they're supposed to do, transmission of resources, that is where in real time, and those results came out, there wouldn't have been any agitation. There wouldn't have been. If you look across the state, yes, some people are still uh, saying they are going to court to provide the result of the governorship election. But you will not see that level of agitation because everything was practically done transparently. But in the presidential election, it wasn't like that. And that is why this level of uh, uh, suspicion is, uh, is coming up. A lot of people are threatening and rest of them. So transparency was key. I make free Nigeria during the presidential election. The National Assembly election was practically free. And that was why, well, that's why I don't see that agitation. So, but as I said earlier on, anybody who's agreed with the results should rather take um, to the rightful way of going to the court rather than um, digging in a self help and rest. Nobody's going to truncate this, this democracy. And every one of us uh, will say no to the interim government. I don't even know where that is from because it's not even our law. So where are you going to get the that is going to impose an interim government? It's not possible. I mean, if, if you look at... Uh, so, so for me now, the question is, uh, all of the statements that we have, very beautiful statement and comments coming from the defense headquarters, you know, you have the army chief and the different regional groups saying, hey, we're not in support, we're not part of this. Does, does it even really translate into anything tangible? Uh, because, I mean, this is a threat. And I'm sure that those who are, if it's, this were to be a developed climb, not necessarily say we're not developing, but if it were to be a different climb, then I'm sure that it would have been handled differently. If you say that we have uh, names or we know those who are planning to install an interim government, that's a threat to our democracy. How come they have not been apprehended? How come these persons have not been invited for questioning or anything, you know, just to be in control? So I really don't know um, how far all of these comments and statements will go for us. Paraventure that becomes a thing. So Because it's okay for us to say, oh, it's not recognized, it's not democratic. But hey, what if you have these persons who are planning what they're planning? And then on the other hand, you have an intelligence unit saying we have identified them. We know these persons, but then we're just telling you that we know these persons. Also, on the other hand, is it also still possible? Because I've asked this question over time to have an interim government installed without you know, the, uh, <laughs> the consent. Can it be installed by you and I or any other person apart from you know, the ruling government? those who are in power, especially if you make reference to what happened, you know, during uh, the uh, 1993 election and all that had transpired? Well, um, as I said earlier, uh, uh, the security agencies that are issuing the statement, I said that, why is it that they have not arrested those that said they are thinking on those that they know that it's always an issue of security being proactive. That if you have any tangible information about people trying to, the best thing to do is to get them arrested and get them charged to court. Uh, but um, I give it to security agents. Uh, they have more uh, security reports uh, than you and I have. They must have seen certain things. But it's still built up to some level of skepticism. If you continue to issue statements without backing it up, or are we sure that they have not arrested some people? It's also possible that they must have arrested some people that we are not aware. But this democracy cannot be trumped. On the issue of interim government, I told you, the 1999 constitution, as amended, in, there is no provision in the 1999 constitution for an interim government. So it is not even possible. Anything, any, anybody that tries to do that is more like what we call a coup d'etat, sort of uh, civilian coup d'etat or the military coup d'etat. 
which is not in our books. We've gone far beyond that. Um, let us do everything we can possible to make sure that the right voting is done. And uh, we people should, uh, should go to the court to see if we do it. Then the, the other arm, um, the other leg I'll be talking about, also talk about is the issue of our judiciary. It's because the people don't have the trust and the, uh, in the judiciary. That is why most of the time they go to extrajudicial uh, means to be able to get what they want. Because most of them don't come to realize that. Um, they get the, the courts and they don't get justice. The justice system seems to be in Nigeria, seems to be, uh, goes to the highest bidder. And for that, that leaves some level of trust. On the part of it. When you say uh, if, uh, if people not take advantage of that, that to win elections and tell you to go to court, if you agree, that is not the way to go. And that is why I said INET must be able to forge itself some of these uh, lapses that they, they, they try to put in place that makes our election not as transparent. Just yesterday, just yesterday there was an election in Finland. And the government, and the, 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 the government of the day lost. In fact, the, the, the president, or is it the prime minister of Finland, came third in that election. She was seeking a re-election. She's, she's the youngest president in the world. I think she's 36. She lost the election. Her party came third. And she considered and, and moved on. But in this country, it's always a do or die affair. We want to win by all means. Whether you are popular or not popular, people just want to have their. So, but uh, let us make sure that uh, we don't truncate the system and secretary the system should do their work. But let them, let them not use it as a, a way of which hunting opponents of the government or who they perceive as enemies of the government. It must be genuinely investigated and those involved arrested. That is my point. Well, Chris, I'd like to show your thoughts on uh, one of the stories on the front page of the Daily Trust newspaper. It talks about Nigeria importing over 300 billion hour worth of palm oil in six years. How does that make you feel at a time where we know that, uh, you know, palm oil contributed to at least 65 to 70 percent of the country's total revenue, you know, before we actually discovered crude oil? It's saddening. Um, it's saddening to me. Um, my place in my it's one of our major uh, products from my village is palm oil. Yes, I can tell you for free that I know how to prepare palm oil. I grew you up do? in the village. <laughs> yes, yes. Umungobu, uh, my village in Imo State, we prepare. I know how to prepare palm oil right from how to cut it of the uh, the fruit, bring it down, cut it into this thing, cook it, pound it, and turn it into palm oil. So it's, it used to be a very lucrative business. In fact, it got to a point that another version came out, which we call the agricultural palm oil. You know because there's some kind of mechanism that was used. So you see the smaller, smaller trees. Instead of you climbing the tree, you see the smaller ones, what we call a great palm, palm fruit, where you just stand. And you can use your cutlass to just bring down the So, but it's quite unfortunate, I said quite unfortunate, because as we rightly said in your opening, uh, we used to be the largest producers of palm oil. And Malaysians came here in the 60s and took some of our palm fronts from here and then took it to Malaysia, where they started good. And now, is it? Let's, let me even shock you. Do you know they now produce gari in China? Gari. This gari that there are instances where you see packaged gari oh, coming gari. from gari. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, now no gari. You know, <laughs> you know I'm sorry, but I'm sure you've heard of, seen of that. Our own gari, gari, <laughs> gari, 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 gari. In fact, let me even take it further. Our own abakleke rice itself is being packaged, or pada rice is being packaged and brought, and brought to Nigeria. So you, you, that is the level at which, and that is why we said the government should diversify the economy. Depending, you see, in one of the headlines, I think it's also very trust, where we are looking for countries to buy our crude cool. oil now, begging. It's on the front page of the daily trust. We are begging people to buy our, who nobody is buying, they are shifting base, they are, and we are supposed to be taking advantage of the war situation in between Ukraine and Russia, because the prices of crude is going up. But we are not getting that. We channel all our efforts into the, Now we are celebrating finding oil, another um, oil in Nasarawa, in Bauchi, and the rest of them. Is that our solution to our problem? That is not the solution. The solution is diversify this economy. I'm making sure that we we'll give so much, much room into agriculture and even information technology. There are so many countries of the world that are making so much money from information technology. That is why 
most of our children are studying computer science, information technology, uh, and the name, uh, name it. That is the highest level of uh, economic distance across the globe. We are not even looking at that. If you go to computer village and see what most of our, our people are doing there and the kind of technology know-how that they are turning out, you'll be shocked. You look at across the globe where you see Nigerians making their marks in the area of information technology. We are not tapping to that. Those are raw areas that we can make money. But everybody is oil, oil, oil. That is state governors, every month they will put up there to and collect stipend instead of finding way of deploying them. If you know the level of uh, mineral resources that in is in every state, gold, a zinc, name it. But they are unexpected. Everybody, that is why some of us continue to pray that let this oil dry or is it's become a cost to us. Because what is the essence of having good oil? That you continue to we continue to drink crude, uh, crude oil, send it abroad, sell it. Now in port, uh, well, now they are talking of removing subsidies on well. And before you know it, by by May, June, we are looking at buying a liter of well at 20 at, at almost 500 naira, a country that produces um, crude oil now buying petroleum from other countries. The only country in the world that does that, that is an oil producing country. That is how bad it is. And that is why we're saying that this kind of leader that will be electing since, I don't know since when, they have failed us. Why other countries are moving up, we are just moving back. And it's just- But, but, but Chris, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking out now to you and I'm, I'm wondering why, you know, it's like a mission impossible for us to understand what exactly are we dealing with now because if at the time you have also alluded to the fact that yes uh, you know the oil sector was uh, at the time booming and then we were you know topping the chart we also knew that it contributed now economic experts have also said that this is also an alternative to crude oil uh, especially where people are shifting grounds. You have countries of the world shifting grounds. The world is moving away from the use of fossil fuel and oil consumption. Now we no longer you know, have bias to patronize us. And if we don't, what we, it, it would mean is that we're just likely going to crash the prices. So we might just be selling for just as less as whatever it is, just because we're in need of you know, those who would want to buy and patronize. So what are we dealing with? Is it that the government does not understand or they don't have the capacity to diversify? What are we looking at now? What exactly is the challenge? Why is it that we have refused to look at these areas? This particular sector has been abandoned. And it's so unfortunate that you know, up until now, we are once upon a time uh, Malaysia used to come to us to get seedlings. Now we're importing, you know, oil from them, palm oil to be precise, for our own consumption as a nation. Yeah, um, let me, let's clarify this. We cannot crash our price of oil. Of the oil is not possible. You know why? We're a member of OPEC. And being a member of OPEC, there is a price tag on every barrel of um, crude oil that is being produced. So you cannot go below that. So we don't even have an option. That is one. Two, at a point we are not even meeting up our uh, our quota, production quota. You remember what happened a few months ago? We couldn't even, the quota that was given to us by OPEC, we couldn't meet it. We, we couldn't meet it. I think it's now that the shah is showing up because of the activities of Tonkolo um, and uh, likes uh, uh, policing our pipeline. So our oil revenue. Everything boils down to one thing, let's say, leadership, L E A D E R. SHIP leadership. That is our problem. We have all the potentials. We have all the right people to do the job. The fact is that we are putting people who know next to nothing about governance at the top of the and that is what we've been crying now. Get the right people to do this. I'm sure that you will get this solved. Our problem is not everything. Our problem is leadership, is those to lead. We have selfish, selfish very selfish leaders who only think about themselves. And the only thing they promise, oh, I will fix road. I will give you, uh, I, will, I, will, I, will, I provide the uh, health care. Those are the basic needs of Nigeria. They promise you that, oh, they will put a condition on all the streets, on your street, if you get them elected. If they are elected, they go back and uh, go back into their selfishness, um, embezzling our funds and um, enriching their families and their cronies. And that is it. No vision, no, nobody has a vision to be able to look beyond what they are. And look at the global, look at the global market and see where we can fit in and how we can be able to do it. Yes, we have people that can do it, but unfortunately that they cannot get to that position because it is more like a, a, a what we like to call it now, like a gang that is able to, it's like an octopus, they're able to corner the whole thing. You cannot penetrate if you try. 
Don't let's say let us just try to be a counselor in your local community and see what you see. Find out what you see. You cannot even afford to collect the form. And if you collect the form, they will not even let you see the light of the day. That is what's happened. Then you can take up it to the state level, to the federal level, and the rest of it. So we have a, a situation where we are having our third eleven. You know, you, you know we talk about football here. Every football match, you must use your first eleven. Why others are using their first eleven? You are using the second team. There is no way you can. Man, you is going to play um, uh, Liverpool, and are going to use their second team when they can. They have first team cannot even match them. You saw what's happened between Man City and Liverpool. Oh, uh, let's leave it. <laughs> I want to rub the team. <laughs> Chris, we have to go at this point in time. Thank you so much. Now that you're calling Liverpool and buying you, I mean, where do you want us to start from? <laughs> Thank you so much, Chris K. There's always a delight to much. have our you on. Just, yes, please. Yeah, our prayer is just God be able to give us the kind of leadership that can put to take this uh, country to the next step. Have a wonderful day ahead. All right, thank you so much, Chris Kende Wandu, uh, for your insights on uh, the papers this morning, uh, making sense of all of the big stories. That's the size of it. We'll definitely return tomorrow with more interesting headlines. But in the meantime, we'll take a quick break. When we return, we'll be looking at the security issues that, you know, have, uh, you know, that are, seem to be on the high. Some people say that it probably feels like, you know, there's been... Uh, you know, return of insecurity to the country shortly after the elections. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.